Now this little doohickey I made is is almost it's a volumetric light. Okay. So if I look up at the top here, I also got uh, a different source of light, and it's called a volume light. So they have a light that kind of does the exact same thing. Now the difference between them, let's say I delete this. is the volumetric light handles everything within its little area, okay? So this is a really nice light to use with a candle. Here, I have the ability to shape light, so I could be a cone, a cylinder, um, a box, and how it presents light to the objects is if I render the scene, let's go back to the actual sphere, if I render the scene, you're going to find out it's dark. It's absolutely dark. Because the only way this light works is if it's inside its cone or area. Okay? It's a really weak light. So I can kind of see what's right there, but not much. It's a really, really weak light. So let's go make it a little bit bigger and the intensity up a little higher. See? Very weak. But what can happen here is volumetric lighting, you know, can be a big, huge, huge area. And anything in that area is lit. And lit very creepily, by the way. So that's what's really nice about this volumetric type of lighting. You know, you can kind of light a scene very dim, like almost like if you're in a cave or a church without the lights on. And you're like, wow, that's just a very nice fault loss that's occurring here. Okay? So that's why you would use this type. Also, um, here we have the ability to change that. So instead of inward, I can go outward. Or inward. So now what will happen is everything on the outside will be... So if you look at it now, it's almost like lighting the moon. And everything in here is total blackness. Anything outside will start lighting up. Okay. So that's why you would change that to outward to inward. And there's down axis too. I can embed the ambient light in here. And ambient light is just pure, pure light, which is if you fill the box, a white box with light, and that would be a very ambient source of light because light is bouncing all over the place. Therefore, it's ambient. And what other cool properties there are? Well, I can go to color range, and I can present a different kind of uh, color in here if I wanted to. That's that's sort of fun. Or I can have a drop-off ratio, or I can have several different drop-off ratios in here. So right here, if I added a color white. Okay, so now it's going dark, white to dark to white again. Okay, very weird. To get rid of it, I can change this, click it off. To change the color here, I can go into that top dot, make it red, and now I have a red to white. Notice as soon as you start messing around with the actual color itself, you start to get to the point where it's like not dropping off correctly also. Okay? Because the darkest here is this is a pure saturated red that I chose. So if I chose an unsaturated red, something like in this area, I start getting that fall off that's occurring again. All right, so that's everything about this one. It's not really, you know, it's not a light that I use very often.
has the same fog ratio, has the same shadowing capabilities. But um, now that we're starting to trickle down into things, you know, like this light kind of has the same properties. Why would you use it? I would say this light would be a, a great candle. But again, you can use the point light just like I showed you before. So let's go on to some more lights.